Hello Patreons. Today I'm going to be showing you how I drew the eye for this portrait of a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. First off I start with the luminance white pencil and I block in the highlight area on the first eye. I'm pressing quite hard to make sure that it's nice and burnished so that any black pencil um, doesn't go over the top and I can remove it if it does. I then go along the line at the bottom of the eye. Uh, the dog had quite a white line uh, below the iris so I made sure to put it in along with the two little white spots on each side of the eye. Then with my black polychromos pencil, I start blocking in where the pupil is on the eye. I make sure to go around the white highlight because you don't, even though I have burnished white on it, you, you don't want to get too much black on it. Otherwise, you'll lose that bright white look of that spot. I'm using a medium pressure uh, just to get more pigment down onto the paper for this spot. making sure to get the pupil nice and round. The, with this um, eye, there's an area between the pupil and the iris where the dark of the pupil sort of blurs out a little bit into the iris. So that's what that slightly grayer area that I've drawn is. Just blocking in the shadow on the top of the eye as well. And the eyelid always shadows the eye, so there will always be that darker area at the top of the eye and the bottom of the eye tends to be a lot lighter. Often with irises in animals and people as well, there's a dark ring on the outside. With this particular dog, it's black, so I've drawn that in as well. just continuing to block in all the areas on the eye which are black so that I don't lose any of those lines when I start colouring in. I also like to get that shadowed area above the eye where the eyelid is um, drawn in just makes it a little bit easier when I'm doing the colouring to so just have a bit more of the area above the eye and it makes the eye look more complete. With um, the eye, I always make sure I am watching the reference photo to make sure that that lid, the eyelid isn't too large. You don't want to overdo that eyelid, that shadowed area above the eye. If you do too much um, eyelid in that area, then it will make the eye look really baggy and it, it won't look very good. adding just a little bit of shadow around the, the bottom of the iris as well. And here I'm using red violet. I'm just putting in a light layer of that colour on the eye. This dog has gorgeous brown eyes and I always like to add the red violet in with the brown just to add that nice beautiful red tinge. I also use the red violet throughout this portrait on the areas where I've got black just to give the black 
a bit more depth rather than just being straight black. I then work on the next layer on the eye using Kaput Mortem and just going over it, I'm doing small circles just to keep the colour even and smooth on the eye and just making sure that it's got a nice good layer of that colour on the eye. I then take Burnt Sienna and do the same. I find all these colours, when you mix them together, it just looks so much better than if you'd just done one or two colours. Using all the different colours, it just looks really good. I then blend it using Ola Solvent. And I've put a little bit on my brush, not too much, and I've wiped it off um, prior to using it on the paper, just so that there's not too much on the brush. And I like to start by blending in the black areas um, before going up to the colours. You don't want to smear the black pigment over onto the coloured areas, otherwise you'll lose the iris and the iris will become too dark. I'm just blending out the iris there. As you see, I've used the blending, the brush to blend some of the black onto the white of the eye as well, just to add a bit of grey there. So I will add to that shortly. And then use the white luminance pencil to add the highlights into the eye. See, this dog had some beautiful reflections in her eyes and it was very easy to add that after I'd already blended and put the pupil in by using the white luminance pencil because it is quite opaque and you can add quite a lot to it. You can see how easy it just goes on adding that colour onto the eye so that you've got that nice reflection of light on it, the eye. I then used Venetian Red to add just a bit more colour into the eye. Do you see how I used the white to add a lighter spot on the bottom of the eye and then I've gone over it with the Venetian Red and that helps just to make it a bit brighter. Otherwise the Venetian Red probably wouldn't have shown as well on that spot if I hadn't done that with the white pencil first. With the white of the eye, often there's a little bit of pink colouring to it. And so here I'm just using the Venetian red just lightly on the white of the eye. Not too much, you don't want to overdo it, but just enough to, so that it's got a little bit of a hint of colour. I'm then taking warm grey three and going over the whole of the white of the eye. The white of the eye is rarely actually white. It's often very grey. Here I'm using warm grey 4 now just to add that darker spot on the edges of the white part of the eye. Then blending it carefully. I don't want to get too much of the black from the edge into that area. I don't want to make it too dark. I'm just using the white luminance pencil to add some more highlights in onto the eye. I love how well the white luminance pencil comes up on other colours. It works really, really well.
using a bit more of the warm grey four to um, get the colour in on the bottom part of the eye and around the edge of the eye. And this is the area where it's more skin than fur. The fur sort of starts just below the eye. There's this little strip of um, skin around the eye where there's no fur. Mostly on the bottom lid and on the side. The top part will have fur shortly. Now I'll switch to cold grey too. And just because this area, because it's got black fur in around the eye, it is a lot cooler than um, what the warm grey does. I use a lot of the cool grey in this portrait to go with the black. But there are a few areas where the grey turned into a, a more of a warmer colour. There's a spot on the snout where the warm grey was used. As you can see, while I'm doing light layers, I do do several layers of the same colour over the same spot. And I just keep adding layers to make sure that there's enough pigment on the paper. So when I go to blend that it does work properly. Because if you don't have enough pigment on the paper, then when you go to blend, it, it won't move. It won't blend properly. Like you'll have to use a lot of the so solvent to get it to look right. And then you'll still have patches on the, where you can see the paper through the pigment. You, you definitely need to get a lot of layers down before blending. And that's easy enough done even with the same colour. You don't need to be doing multiple colours. You just do multiple layers of the same colour. Just starting with the black pencil, adding in the fur detail around the eye. I'm including this part in this uh, tutorial because the fur around the eye is a little bit unusual. You've got the longer fur on the lid above the eye, but if you can see those little sort of dotty spot um, lines that I did to start with with the black pencil, um, the fur is they're sort of like wrinkles around the eye, and it. Make sure to look at your reference photo and see what it looks like directly around the eye because the fur doesn't start straight away. It starts down a little bit and you've got these little tiny creases and wrinkles in that um, that line around the eye. Well, with this fur, uh, always watch your reference photo to make sure that it's going in the right direction. The fur tends to go in all sorts of directions around the eye, so you always make sure you're watching your reference photo so that you're getting it in the right spot. And this side of the eye, there's these little dark creases. Um, in humans, they're called laugh wrinkles, laugh lines. Um, but yeah, you just got to make sure that they're added into can easily do that just with the black pencil, getting those creases in. Just adding those short little wrinkly spots in on that area. And then that's where the fur starts, just below that area. I'm just blending it out again. I'm using a bit more um, solvent on the brush than I usually do. Probably should have blotted that a little bit more. Now 
I'm just using a lot. It doesn't make sense to add a few more highlights. Sometimes you just need to put a little subtle line in on that edge of the eye so that you can see where the eyeball curves and where it separates from the eyelid above it. Making that upper lid that bit darker. When I'm using um, pencils, I'm usually constantly rotating them in my hand so that I'm always drawing from a different edge of the pencil and that helps to keep it sharp rather than having it flatten along one side. And that way you don't have to sharpen it quite as often as if you're only using one side of the pencil. If you watch when I'm holding the pencil, you'll see I'm often rotating it. I stop for a moment and then rotate it and then keep going. Like just then. <laughs> and then use my white luminance pencil to get those highlights in. It isn't as bright on this side of the eye because this eye is more in the shadow. But I'm still making sure that protected from the black with the white pencil first. Mm. Using the black to start blocking in where the pupil is and the shadows along the edge of the eye. There's white fur from on the nose and that's why I've sketched in some of those fur marks just so that I'm not going over all that fur with the black pencil you want to keep some of that white. And this eye is a lot darker than the other one. So there's not as much colour in it and a lot more black. I'm just using the white luminance pencil to protect those little straps, little white fur. And that longer one there, I'm using a fairly good pressure on that just to help protect that paper from the black. Just adding another layer of black and getting that line in below the eye. And blocking in the eyelid as well. And going over the black with the red violet just makes that colour so much deeper and not quite as flat. I'm just using the burnt sienna to add a bit more depth to the those colours and the Venetian red. And 
blending it out. You can see the little white lines that I did before are standing out a bit better when you blend it. You don't have to be as careful at protecting those spots when you've protected it already with um, the white pencil. You can go over those spots a bit easier with the when you're blending. It makes it just that much easier. Mostly important when you're doing sections with white fur not as important with other colours because white fur is very hard to keep it white. <laughs> now onto the highlights in the eye. This eye doesn't have too many highlights, just a few. Oh. I always find the highlights make the eyes look so much better once they're in. I'm just correct, correcting the mistake I did with the white pencil by going over it with the black. It's always good when you can correct little things like that. Just using the white luminous pencil again to protect those little whiskers. See, I'm starting on to the fur and using the white lens pencil to protect the whiter areas in that fur. If you remember to do that before you start colouring, it makes a big difference in your fur texture. This particular dog has a lot of white fur in with um, the brown and the black. So getting those lines in first definitely help a lot with the fur and getting that right texture and colour. So here I'm using foam green just to loosely sketch in the fur around the eye. And this particular dog has these little brown areas, patches right above the eyebrows. It looks, it's very interesting colouring, very beautiful. Using the black to darken that a little bit. And just further darkening that area above the eye. Sometimes with black you just have to keep going back and adding more layers just to make sure that it gets as dark as you need it to be. This particular side of the face is quite dark so I wanted that black to be very um, intense and not faded at all. You want it quite black. And that second white line that I've put underneath the eye, and that's the same as on the other eye where it's that um, spot 
the area around the eye where before the fur has started. Yeah, it's just, you can see the skin a little bit. And blending it all out. When you've got more layers on the page, you do have to be a bit careful about how much of the solvent's on the brush. You don't want too much because it'll start mirroring the pigment rather than just um, blending it nicely. And then you get, it'll start getting smudgy. Here I'm using cold grey five, um, just to darken that line around the eye. And that's the two eyes for this portrait complete. And I hope you've enjoyed tutorial which is the first of three based off of this portrait. The next one will be looking at how I created the nose for this portrait. Thank you all for your support. I really appreciate it. Bye for now.